Hello, it's Rainy. How you doing? Starting out with some of the Danta. But the problem is that the world attracts you with its instant pleasures. When your senses contact the external objects, you enjoy them forthwith. You do not realize that the pleasures arising out of sense contacts are fleeting. They diminish and gradually yield to sorrow. Conversely, you find that true happiness has a distasteful beginning. Hmm. We talked about this yesterday, I think, about self-love and how it's very difficult, which is why people don't try to pursue it and pursue worldly things to fill that void and try to gain that happiness, but that doesn't work. That's, conversely, you find that true... Oh, Bill, because we read this yesterday, too. Conversely, you find that true happiness has a distasteful beginning. When you try to seek happiness within yourself, it is bitter to start with. It's difficult. But with determined effort, you gain more and more happiness. It is strange, but true. Sorrow appears in the mask of joy, and joy appears in the mask of sorrow. It is the law of nature. Consequently, the ignorant... The ignorant masses discard happiness and court sorrow. This has been the sad history of humans. The Bhagavad Gita cautions you of this paradox in nature. Its 18th chapter states, True happiness is like poison in the beginning, but nectar in the end. Verse 37. False happiness is like nectar in the beginning, but poison in the end. Verse 38. Yeah. You know, but you have to live and learn, right? If, if you don't, if no one teaches, even if you get taught this, you know, experience is the best teacher. So you might not listen and then have to learn for yourself. And you get hurt and then you don't do it again. Don't touch the stove. <laughs> anyway. God puts rainbows in the clouds so that each of us in the dreariest and most dreaded moments can see a possibility of hope. Maya Angelou. So beautiful. It is impossible to have the feeling of peace and serenity without being at rest with God. Dorothy Pentecost. P-E-N-T-E-C-O-S-T. So, you know, you, God, you believe in God, universe, whatever. Keep praying, but be thankful that God's answers are wiser than your prayers. William Kultbertson, C-U-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. That's true. Our prayers should be for blessings in general, for God knows best what is good for us. Yeah, don't ask for things. It's not a request line. It's not a DJ. That's from Socrates. Not the DJ part, but the other part. The Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. Isaiah 30, 18. Father, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Maria Willis, you have been mistreated, cheated, or deceived, and if your heart has been right all along, be assured that God knows this. God will eventually vindicate you. But in the meantime, you should be confidently aware that God knows the truth concerning what has happened to you. He knows if your heart has been right. Theodore Epp, E-P-P. When you are praying, first, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in Heaven will forgive your sins too. Mark 11, 25. Mm -hmm. But I think he forgave your sins anyway. That's kind of the deal, right? The whole Jesus thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.